Hi everybody, uh, I'm back to you again and uh, there's this video that I made showing you the, the house where I was working with the seniors. Now this one that you see here, this one is a mortuary. The big building, this is behind the hospital. I'm just making this video. I hope that nobody is going to notice because in normal circumstances, they don't allow people even to make photos in a place like this. This one that you're seeing here, this one is part of our very big hospital. The behind, of, uh, the, uh, behind, behind part of it, the front part is on the other side. Now, there's a story reasons as to why that I came here to make this photo. Now, as I was working in the senior house, it was very comfortable. I really enjoyed my work. We were with my colleagues there. The residents there were very, very friendly people. Now, one time when I was just sitting there, okay, normally here we have um, places where somebody can go and look for a job or they just come on the internet. They just plop up in the internet. So it happened that, like, that time, one time I was having my lunch. We were having our lunch with my colleagues. Then one popped up, a job option. What was the job option? To go and work in the mortuary. I said, why not? I sent uh, an application and then I was called to go and do an interview. Well, when you are working with the seniors, as I told you before, sometimes you go there, you work in the evening or you work when you go back again, you find that one of the seniors passed on. For us, this was something very, very normal. We'll take them, prepare them, and then the hospital or the ambulance will come and take them and take them to the mortuary. So now this is the mortuary where I was to come and do my interview. Fine, I came here. The first day I did my interview with these people, the doctors that were there, who are work the, all the people who are working there at the mortuary. It is a very, very clean place. When you're inside there, you cannot even imagine anything. I sat there. We did the I did the interview. There were some other people also. We did the interviews and then we left. Then I was told after one week, you come and you start. You do your probation, not starting the work, but you have to do the prob probation first so that they, fight, they see if you're fit to do this work. Fine, I went the first day and I was taken to the section of children. Well, it is just as sad as a, being a mother, I found it very, very sad to hand, uh, handle a, a dead child. But the children that I handled there, it was just washing them, cleaning them, dressing them in the way that the pathologists are going to take them, to take them to, the, to, the, to be prepared for the patho pathologists to work on them, to be taken inside there, wherever they are working with them. I did this the first time. <laughs> I did the second day. It was just okay with me. There was no problem. So the third day, because I was supposed to do the pro this probation for only one week, the third day, I was taken to a different section. Now, this section that I was taken to, this section that I was taken to was a place with women. I was taken to a place where are a section for the women. So when I went there, we worked on the first body. It was just okay. Then the second body was brought in. It was still covered with white sheet. 
lying on the stretcher. We were, st we were standing around the stretcher, about five people. So we were told to remove the bed sheet from this body. I got a shock of my life. Okay, it is nothing, it is something that I didn't expect, but yes, it happened. This dead body, a woman, the eyes were very much open. <laughs> the eyes were very much open, just looking at us. I got hold of myself, I strained like nothing has happened. I was trying to look at the other people and to them it was like life is just normal. So you know what I did? <laughs> I just excused myself. I told those people that I'm going to help myself. I went. I went where my jacket was. <laughs> where my bag was because normally we don't have to carry our bags when we are working. I went where my bag was, I took my key, got into my car and drove off. I just went and parked somewhere and I was like, what have I just seen? Somebody dead just looking at us? And then I said, no. Then immediately my phone started calling and I realized that this call was coming from the hospital. I didn't pick it. The second one came again. I didn't pick it. And then I just got hold of myself. I said, let me see, let me see, let me see. Can I talk to these people? Should I just tell them that I'm not going back because I was not intending to go back there after what I, I experienced? So I was not sure if i really wanted to talk to these people or not but uh finally i had to receive one of the calls because they persisted they kept on calling me they really wanted to know where i was so i received the call and the person who was calling me was like, so and so, where are you? You have been away for about 25 minutes. Are you okay? And then I told them, um, I'm sorry, I'm okay, yes. Then he was like, but you don't say, sound really okay. Is there something wrong with you? I had to be very, very frank and open to these people and tell them exactly. After what I saw, I really got a shock. And as I'm talking to them right now, as I was talking to them right now, as I'm talking to you right now, um, I've already driven out of that place and I'm parked somewhere in there, just somewhere near a supermarket somewhere. I'm just trying to imagine if I can, should go on with this kind of of a job or to go on with the probation. My friends, I never went back. It was just too much for me. You know, I don't know, I don't exactly know what happened because in normal circumstances where we are, we were working with the seniors, if somebody passes on, we prepare this person well, we clean him or her, we okay fine with the dresses that they had we have to do, remove these dresses there's special dresses that they are given and we soothe the eyes until they're closed in this case it was either the person who prepared this person the dead body to come to the hospital either forgot to do that or they did it and the dead body flipped the eyes open again. Nobody knows exactly what happened 
because I didn't go back there to talk to my colleagues to get to know what might have happened. It was, you know, unaogopa ani niliogopa. I couldn't just imagine, you know, I, I was standing on the head, on the on the upper head, on the upper side of the body where the head is. So when the bed sheet was flipped open, the eyes were just direct on me. <laughs> At least nowadays I can laugh. <laughs> I can laugh. It is a story that I've not told any member of my family. You know, it was like I um, can I no I know I cannot I could not talk it out to anybody. Then the person who called told me, "Can you you just go and relax, and then you come back tomorrow, and then we can see what we can do to help you." I went back home, I sat down, I tried to imagine if I could go back there, but uh, I just realized, you know, um, I don't know. Now, I'm back again. Uh, I was making this the first video just near the mortuary and there was a lot of disturbance uh, vehicles were passing there and you know like uh, that is a place that uh, normally one is not even supposed to make noise in the first place and uh, like the video that I was making it was like sort of uh, raising eyebrows so I had to stop now my story goes on I was taken, taken to this section where we were supposed to prepare these women. And uh, as I told you, uh, the first body that was brought there, the second body, uh, this woman, the dead body, happened to be like uh, the eyes were wide open. And I told you that I left that place. These people tried to, to reach me, the first call, the second call, and I was really not quite sure if I was to pick this call because after what I experienced, I was like, no, I have to make up my mind. So when I was back, I tried to compose myself and... Uh, to see if I could really talk to this person who was uh, calling me. Because I'm very sure that uh, they really wanted to know the reason why I've taken too long not going back to where I was supposed to be. They were supposed to be working on this body. So I just composed myself and I told the person, um, uh, let me just see if I can come there tomorrow because... Uh, what I've just experienced is something that I didn't really expect. I got a shock. In fact, I even almost talked to a German person in Kiswahili. <laughs> I just told the person, um, she asked me, Betty, are you really okay? Okay, the person, being that we, I'm here in Germany, we are talking in English, uh, sorry, in, uh, in German. I told the person, yeah, uh, I was shaking anyway. I told the person, uh, I'm really not okay. Just give me time to relax, then uh, I can see if I come back tomorrow. And in fact, he laughed. He laughed at me very, very loud because it is not something that uh, I respond that in fact he expected from me because they have always taken us Africans to be uh, very brave people and uh, strong and you, you know and especially me being with my body they thought okay now this is now somebody that uh, yeah so he told me okay you go you come back tomorrow I went at home and that vision you know a dead body with the eyes looking at you is just <laughs> 
Yes, I know. Munaweza ku imagine what it was. Anyway, I don't want to give any anybody any fear. But it happened to me. So I came back, I went back home, I relaxed. And uh, I tried to compose myself and I said, okay, it is kind, it is a job. People are working there. There are people who are handling these dead bodies. There's no point of being afraid of them, by the way. It is only that their life has left them. But apart from that one, there's nothing wrong with them. In fact, I even asked myself, Betty, why... Why do you fear a dead body? Because you're supposed to go and work there. What was the point of you running away because you saw the woman's eyes open? Then uh, I said, okay, in as much as uh, I was um, afraid, I tried to cool myself down. And Nikasema, yes, interview Kesho. I'll go back there tomorrow. And I talked to the person responsible. Nimueleze that uh, first of all, I had to apologize for what happened because having left the place without uh, excusing myself, that one, first of all, was a mistake. Fine. The person whom I, the supervisor who was there was somebody who was very, very understanding. And uh, I explained myself after what happened. Akanyambia, he told me yes. Uh, we thought of, we sort of thought that uh, having experience or seen what happened, you must have gotten a shock, especially being that that was the first time in this station. The other part with the children was very much okay. There was no problem. So I just excused myself and I told them, um, I'm not trying to give anybody fear of working in a, in a place like this. Because as I said from there in, before, a job is a job. And this kind of a job, the reason why... I wanted to work there is because they pay good money. The money there is very, very good. As I told you here, people are being paid per hour. You are not paid. They just say, don't say, okay, this how they, okay, there are places that they, they say, okay, you work monthly, you are being paid so much uh, at the end of the month. But there are instances whereby you go and they tell you, okay, you're going to be earning so much per hour. So if you calculate, you find it is a good money. Now, this is the reason why I went there. So despite the fact that uh, the money was very good, the first incident gave me some sort of fear. And as I was, I'm just trying to say, I'm not here to give anybody fear it all depends with an individual you can work anywhere anybody can work anywhere these people are just human beings it's only that their lives have left them they don't have any problem with anybody we just you just prepare them to take them to their final resting place. So, as I was saying, I just excused myself and I told the supervisor there that uh, after that experience, I don't think that I can work there anymore. So, that was the end of my probation in this place on that, on that day. So I had to look for another job. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm working in a different place. And uh, very soon I'm going to make another video to show you 
where I'm working at present. It is a place where I'm also working with human beings, of course. And I'm going to tell you and show you where the place is and which people I'm working with. As at now, I'm just here to tell you, please, don't fear to work anywhere. One thing, don't despise somebody's job because the kind of jobs that people, these people are, are, are doing, are, those are the kind of jobs that are giving them the kind of lifestyles that they have. They're paying their rents, putting food on their tables, paying the school fees for their children, and so forth and so forth. Even when they want to go to holidays, this, yeah, the money they, they use, they get from this kind of job that they are doing. For now, I have to call off this video. Thank you very much for listening to me, for viewing me. Those who have laughed at me, I know very many people have laughed. It is very much okay. I'm sure there are people who have gone maybe through worse experiences than what I went through. But that is life. It is job. People have to live after all that they went through. After what happened to me, in fact, uh, this is the first time I'm coming to talk about this thing. I've never even talked it out to my children, with my children, not even my friends. Nobody even knew that I even want, went one time at the mortuary to do a probation, or maybe I applied for a job at the mortuary because I wanted, first of all, to finish what I wanted to do and then maybe come to tell people after maybe I am working. So those people maybe who will be hearing or be, maybe will be viewing this video, well, just get to know that one time Betty did a probation in a mortuary. That is very normal because people work in the mortuary, of course. People handle the dead bodies until they are taken to the final resting places. And I am one of them who was willing to do this after, but after this happened, um, I called it off. I don't fear it anymore right now. No, it is something that just happened that time. It is something that I never expected that was going to happen. And that is why it, uh, yes. And that is why I had to leave. I, in fact, I, I would say that I regret that uh, I, I left, but uh, okay, yes, I left. What I wanted to say is that it happened. I never told anybody what I went through and I'm talking it right now. Yes, it happened to me. Even if you meet me somewhere, you just talk to me. I'm just going to tell you yes. And I'm even going to tell you even more that happened that I've not even talked here on the video. Yes, it happened. Right. Just requesting, don't forget to like my video, share, subscribe, and that button, notification button, should not be forgotten. I still have more to show. Thank you very much for being my fans.